Okay, we're, we're live. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thanks for joining Mike and I. We are blabbing today about the power of investing in yourself. So I'm Kaz Makepeace, co-founder of Why Travel Blog, and joining me is Mike from Advanced Business Abilities. How are you, G'day. Mike? I'm good, Kaz. G'day, everybody. Thanks for tuning in with us, and we hope you get a lot of value out of this today. So, yeah. Kaz, so uh, go ahead, Mike. Sorry. Yeah, this is one of my favourite topics. Um, me too. Yes, so I know that you love it as well. So it's exciting to dive on into this today. So um, if you just want to start maybe by uh, talking a little bit about the power of investing yourself, uh, why you feel it's really important, and uh, and then we can go from there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the first thing I'll do, and you'll probably get used to this eventually, but before I actually start talking, I want to ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> I love your questions. Um, <laughs> so my, my question is, um, what, what, what is power to you? Like, so let, let's define power. That's a really great question. Uh, so power to me means control. Okay, cool. That I have control and, um, yeah, control and, control and confidence. I know um, that I can make the decisions and I'm smart enough and good enough, I guess. Okay, great. Uh, I, I know that for myself, 10, 10 years ago, I had no idea what power was. And I thought I did. I thought I really mm. knew what power was, you know. And I, I actually, at that time, would have said the exact same thing. Power is control. It's the ability to mm -hmm. control and handle things and make decisions. And, um, and I, I've, I've learned a lot about power since then. It's a really interesting topic to me. Because, mm. because power, if you, think about, if you think about people in organizations that have power, yeah, they have control or a level of control, but what's the source of the power? And um, Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Yep. I'm, well, I'm curious to keep you. Yeah, the, the, source, the source of their power is actually support. Mm-hmm. So power equals support. Right. The amount of power that you have is equal to the amount of support that you have. Now, support comes in lots of different forms and from lots of different angles. You can have the support of your friends and family. You can have the support of, you know, your fans or the, the people who like you, the people who like your message. You can have support from suppliers, depending on the type of business you are. You can have support from the banks. Um, mm -hmm. Someone becomes the president of the United States or the prime minister of Australia because they have the support of the people around them. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah. So and the, the less other... support you have, the less power you have. Yes. The less support okay. you have, the less power you have. And power yeah. is something that, Power and support are therefore something that are flowed to you. There's actually a motion and an action to it. They're not something that just, you know, you don't, you don't just grab power and off you go. Um, mm. you, you, you can grab it by force and then you've got forced support. Um, but that's right. nowhere near as powerful. So now there's a really important source of support that you want to make sure you're generating. And that source of support is the support of yourself. Right. Which is really a lot, a lot of what the, the whole Confidence Igniter program is, is about. It's about learning how to and, and, and developing systems for supporting yourself to be able to do, th do the things you would like to do and feel the way that you would like to feel. Um, does that, is that real to you? Yeah, because if you're not, if, I mean, yourself is at the center of everything so if you're not supporting yourself then you are going to work to uh take that support from other people which then means your power is not a true source of power or maybe a good source of power yeah your 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 um your power is is strictly determined by how you feel other people think about you. So if you're supporting yourself 
in a good way, you have the support of yourself, then it's mm -hmm. more likely that you'll get the support of other people that will just kind of well, you you'll just feel kind of navigate to you, gravitate to you. I mean, well, it, it's um, it's it's difficult to receive support if you don't think that you're worthy of the support. And if you're not supporting yourself, that's kind of what happens, isn't it? So, so Absolutely, therefore it becomes yeah. a, yeah, therefore it becomes a, um, a, a self perpetuating situation. Mm. And mm. a lot of people don't realize this. I know from the work that we've done together and you, you, um, were able to see that my sense of self-worth was extremely low. And so, even though I'm going about my business and doing well with it, there were areas in my life where I was stuck. And when I worked with you, I was able to see this way I was not supporting myself was actually inhibiting my, my growth and, and not letting that natural flow of support come to me. Yeah. Um, what I've seen over the last 10 years is it's, it's like there, there's a, there was a blind spot there. And mm. the, all of the people that I've worked with over the last 10 years, in, and this includes me, <laughs> this includes <laughs> myself, like I, I physically still today invest in both with time and money and effort and attention, invest in being coached because mm. I don't know my own blind spots. I can't see my own blind spots. Um, and so it's not until you can get that extra help, that, that objective point of view, to have someone else say, well, okay, hold on. What about this? What, what's, mm -hmm. what's that? What's going on there? Um, so, you know, the, the value the, or the, the power of investing in yourself or, you know, there it is right there, mm -hmm. because when you're in something, you, it does not matter how objective you attempt to be with yourself. You, you cannot see it when it's, when it's something that, that, that is that, fundamental like when it's something where you're you're pulling the rug out from underneath your own feet and you don't know that you're doing it or you don't oh, know yeah. how you're doing it it is near, nearly impossible to see that on your own yeah absolutely and to see how it affects like I, I knew that it was there but I just had no idea I thought that I was in control of it but I had no idea of what it was doing until you highlighted that for me um and then it was like oh this actually does impact my life and and that's why i've been feeling so stuck without realizing it yeah. and you know you, as you say these are blind spots you can't come to these realizations unless you take and i like how you mentioned like time um money investing in yourself but also attention and effort which we've been speaking a little bit mm. about in these blabs um that it's you know it's not as difficult as you think you don't necessarily have to you know spend hours each day but no. each day there should be time it's good to dedicate time each day to investing in yourself either through courses or coaching but also the little things in paying attention developing your awareness um and those sorts of ways so what are some of those maybe simple ways we can do that yeah, well, there's there are lots of ways because it's not it's not always just about you know having a coach. Like there's a lot of people out there that that no matter how much a coach charges, there are people that are going to struggle to invest in a coach. So let's let's mm -hmm. start off talking about well, how how can you do that um, if finances are a little bit tight right now? You know, there might be mm -hmm. a push to there might be a push to engage in an online program um, for, from a financial standpoint. And, mm -hmm. and to me, this, this ties in great because, you know, we've talked about power is support, right? One of the mm -hmm. most important sources of support that you have is your friendship circle. And, um, and there's a lot of people that have friends that don't necessarily understand that. And so, you know, if you have a group of friends around you who, who they'll tell you how awesome you are and they won't talk to you about, Hey, what are you doing there? Like, that doesn't make sense to me. That doesn't seem like you. It doesn't seem mm. like that's in line with who you are from a, 
you know, maybe from an ethical standpoint or from a, you know, point of view of you living your, your, your life the way you really like to. Mm. I look for friendships that I know that the person that I'm in a friendship with is going to be willing to have that type of conversation with me right, because yeah. that's support. And when I have those friendships, I'm able to go and talk to those people and ask them, Hey, look, can I ask for some feedback from you? Oh, my phone's going. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah. Ask, ask those questions. Ask, ask people who observe you and spend time with you. Ask them questions like, well, look, what do you, what do you see as, you know, the things that I'm good at? Um, and mm -hmm. what do you think, what do you see as the, the things I do that don't support me? That's a really great way to frame it. And I think what's important, because that can be a really scary thing for someone yeah. to do. Absolutely. And so I think it's important for them to realise, look, this is not an opportunity for you to uh, pull yourself down and think about what a loser you are and how you don't do everything right. I think you've got to go into that with the idea of I'm willing to hear what will be told to me purely for the purposes of me improving so that I can have more power and create a reality that I really want to have. Mm. Yeah, hundred percent. And, um, mm. and you know, th that does require an investment. It's an investment of time. It's an investment of um, willingness to experience exposing yourself and being exposed to whoever you ask that question of um now you know then if you can if you can invest a, a bit of money to get a well-trained person you know who who works as a coach or who has the skills to be able to do that with you um mm. then that that becomes really valuable the, because they've got the skills to ask the questions that others probably wouldn't ask um, you know, on, on the, on the, in the confidence igniter program, as you and I were working together and, and, you know, in, in times we've done stuff since then, I've asked a lot of questions that were pretty mm -hmm. pointy questions of you. Um, mm -hmm. and in your willingness to inspect those questions, that's, that's where moments of, uh, people love to call them aha moments. That's when those yeah. happen where you go, oh, yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't see that. Oh dear. Yeah. Yes. Oh <laughs> um, dear. And, and, <laughs> yeah. and that's, that's when you'll have either, you'll, you, you'll have either a cognition and a, and a cognition is where you go, Oh, wow. Okay, great. Yeah. I hadn't seen that before. You see something new. Um, it's like a, a distinction. A distinction is mm -hmm. you get a new bit of information about something that you already knew, but you now see it a different way. Um, yes. So you can either have a cognition or you can have a bognition. <laughs> <laughs> What's that one? A bognition, that is where you go, a bognition is where you go, oh, bugger. Oh, geez. Oh, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. mm -hmm. <laughs> so they're, they're two very different experiences and both of them are learning. Both of them are examples of where you're, you're learning good stuff. Yeah, yeah, totally. And um, I've had many of those working with you, cognition and cognition. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> but but I think, and you know, I think a lot of people are hesitant to dive into this investing in themselves, and they, for whatever reason, have roadblocks there. But once you start and you do see the power of it, of that awareness of. Um, the way you think and the way you act and without holding any blame or shame towards yourself. Once you see that when you've shone the light of that, on that and you learn ways to uh, manage that, to change that, to empower yourself more, then you find that this you can take to changing your life because you see the power in it and how you then start to tune into the ability that you have within yourself to to be aware, to hear your own voice, to understand how you work and operate 
So you tend to listen to the outside noise less and you get less confused because let's face it, the, wor the world was noisy and there are a million people telling you how to do things in a million different ways and you can get so lost, confused and say, well, I don't know what to do. But if you spend all this time and effort and attention in investing in yourself, then suddenly it matters less what they're saying and you just have more of this inner knowing of I know what to do when and where and what's best for me. Yeah, yeah. And that that's a really important thing because no one else can make a decision for you other than you. So the things that I, I know for myself, the things that I invest in and the things that I recommend that others invest in are things, experiences and, um, and support from people that are going to mm -hmm. assist you to be able to think for yourself and think clearly. Um, you know, the, the thing about, for, for like, for example, finances, mon money, um, and, and, and people being willing to invest money into themselves. It's fascinating. Like, my viewpoint is that every, everything about your life and or your business is a creation of your mind. It, it's a, Absolutely. it's a reflection. Yeah. Of, yeah, it's a reflection of the way that you think about it. So, mm -hmm. so that what that says is that if there's any situation or condition in your life or your business, that's not exactly the way that you would like it to be. The real source of the problem that exists is in the way that you think about it. Now, oh, my phone's going again. Let me turn that off. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, so, so if it's a reflection of the way you think about it and the source of the problem is in your mind, then the same thing applies to the subject of money and, and money is one of the most one of money is the subject that has um, more logical thoughts than anything else. Yeah. And so this sends people crazy, right? <laughs> it does. It, it's the number one thing that ends relationships. It's the number one source yeah. of heaps and heaps of problems for people today. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, the challenge with that is that their reality on money is based on the way they think about it. We believe, we believe things like, you know, my mum and dad, my dad particularly used to say this one thing that stuck with me and the statement, the phrase, I'll say the belief system was, well, money doesn't grow on trees. Oh, same with my parents. <laughs> now, I can even picture a money tree because of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the fascinating thing is that money does actually grow on trees because it's made of paper. Yes. It's so paper. it doesn't grow on trees. Um, <laughs> Quite plastic these days, though. <laughs> well, that depends on if you're in Australia. Anybody who's out there listening to this in the United States is like, yeah, it's all paper. Um, you're going to the US yeah. in a couple of months. You'll, you'll know it's all paper. Um, so, you know, it, it's fascinating because that thought, that belief system then puts a restriction on the way you think about money that it's fascinating to look at how it impacts all of the different decisions that you make. Um, so... Which is the conundrum because, you know, to get to the point of undoing some of that stuff, it does require an investment from you. And if that's the subject that is bringing you back, well, you, you've got a conundrum. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's so interesting that you, what you've just spoken about there, because it, it correlates with me and my thinking so much. And I was just on a podcast recently where uh, I was talking about this idea about mindset and someone asked me a question about why do I invest so much time and money and attention in myself and I spoke about my morning routine involves a lot of meditation and reading, empowering uh, words of wisdom, setting myself up right for the day. Uh, and as uh, like I could be somewhat of a course addict, it's, not, it's just that I know that I, my business is me and if I've got a block somewhere, if something is not working in my business, it's up to me to work out what is it going on in my mind that's making me create this. So I will straight away get to work on myself. And that's where I always turn to first is myself. Mm. And a couple of years ago, I noticed that with our, our business, I've, I felt the ceiling was there. And I was like, what is going wrong with my relationship with money? I knew something was there and 
you know, we had gone through bad investments. So I, I wasn't blaming the GFC. I wasn't blaming my parents, even though I had gone on a journey where I'd done that before and that didn't work. So it was like, what's going on with me? And I spent a good year, I called it my money project, where I just invested time, resources into learning about money, how it worked, but diving into those beliefs that I knew were somewhat controlling my relationship with money. And in doing that, completely changed it, completely changed it. And it's a work in progress. I think it's really important for people to understand when you're, you know, investing in yourself, it never ends because there's so many layers to ourselves that we that we peel away and we un- we peel one layer away and we uncover more of these beliefs that are down there, um, you know, pulling the rug from under our feet. Mm. Yeah, I, I agree. And, um, and I think the other thing that happens is there are layers and sometimes those layers don't actually get activated until you get into a different situation in life. So you can do a bunch of work and, right. and then go, all right, I've, I've, I'm confident I've got that handled. And then, you know, you yeah. take five steps, a few things change in your life and your business. And then all of a sudden you hit a new level of or a new layer of stuff that you go, whoa, okay, hold on, this is different. Um, or sometimes you can even go, yeah. hold on, I thought I'd dealt with this. And, and then it's important to realize and remember, well, actually, yeah, my situation's changed. There's just a different level of stuff coming up. Um, and, and the important thing for me is that it, it's really about skills development. You know, there's, there's lots mm. of, um, I'll say, you know, self-help stuff or, um, yeah, it, it's to me that the important thing is it's about skills development because at the end of the day, every single person on the planet has got the same opportunity to learn and develop skills and be able to do things. Um, yes, some are born into a more difficult situation than others um, yeah. a- and everybody's got the opportunity to develop themselves and develop their skills. and. The people that do that are the ones that seem to achieve more than others. Um, it's it's not luck. It's 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 really about investing in yourself to be able to learn and develop those skills. And that's a pretty powerful thing. And when we're invest, yeah, and and it's so powerful because it's open to everybody. There's no limit anyone can start right now they can go I'm taking my daughters Kalara and Savannah to the library after lunch today and we're going to borrow out some books so thank I'm so grateful they love reading they'll sit there and read all day which I just think is one of the best gifts you can give to children because that's where the learning comes right mm. um, so we're going to borrow a lot of books and and they we're going to Singapore this weekend so they're taking them on the plane and just that, I mean, anyone can go to their local library and that's where I started, Mike, many years ago at the local library, borrowing out books and reading one after the other and then the change started and I saw how it worked and then I moved on to getting more refined help and and then, you know, going to, to courses and seminars and now uh, coaching work which with you pulling out those things, those blind spots, which I didn't know were there. <laughs> but, it, it, you know, it is anyone, you can, it's so easy for anyone to start. No matter where they are, they can start with the local library and get it. Yeah, that's correct. Yep. And, and if that's the position that you're in, if that's the starting point, then great. Take that starting point and, and be aware that that's the choice you've made. So make that choice and go and get it done and, and start that journey. Um, if you've done that and it, it, you know, it, it hasn't worked and something is still, you know, the reality that you'd like hasn't presented itself yet. Um, well, okay. The thing is reading books is going to give you the opportunity to know about certain things, um, which will open and expand mm-hmm. you to seeing that, you know, things are a different, maybe a different way than you thought they were. Um, the real change happens when you get knowingness. And, and, yes, and, and, I was about to ask you a question on it, so go yeah. ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a really big difference between knowing about something. So you, you, you can know about, you know, something existing. You, you, can, you can read a book and go, oh, yeah, that makes sense. 
that's very, very different from that topic or that subject being a part of the way you live. It's, it's really different from mm. it being implemented in your life as an actionable, practical thing that you do. Um, and, and that's knowingness. Yeah. When, you know, when you know something to that level where it's part of you, well, okay, that, that's a big difference. Um, so search for the things that help you get knowingness. And knowingness really only comes from experience. It really only comes from practical experience and then pulling that experience apart and going, okay, what actually happened there? Yeah, and we this is the work that we've done and that we've done within the confidence igniter as well and 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 stuff that you taught me. I was like, oh I know I know all this. But it wasn't until I did the application, went through the system that you took me through that I understood the difference between knowing about something and then knowingness. Because once I, w I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> There's the bog mission right there. That's the bog mission <laughs> yeah. that you're talking about. The, the bogness. Yeah. And it was like, how have I gone through my entire life, like knowing, but not having that knowingness and imagine what life would have been like if I did. So it, it is so much more than just reading it in a book and knowing it. It's about applying it and being aware of the change or the impact that it has upon your own life and then continuing that awareness and that adjustment and application of it. Is it, it is, yeah. Everybody watching this right now, like what, you, what you're seeing, it, it, it really, it was interesting because Kaz really did expose herself in the Confidence Igniter program. Like you'll see lots <laughs> of those things where, yeah, there's moments of, oh, I hadn't looked at it like that before. Oh, and, and so um, it's a very real thing. So, <laughs> yes, it's fascinating. That's yeah. the difference between knowing about something. You know, you, and knowing about, another way to talk about it is knowing about something is the theoretical aspect. Um, it's the, it, what's the other word I want to use? Um, it's the academic aspect of it. And you know, that while it has a value, it's far less valuable than having the knowingness of it, like where you can apply it, you can think with it, it's part of you, it's, it's something that you have a knowingness of. Um, and that's really the thing that you're, you're chasing for all this stuff. So. Yeah, and I, I just had another thought as well. And I wanted to hear your thoughts on it in regards to um, the knowingness comes through the application of things, but also in regards to, I guess, the confidence and le learning to have the confidence to listen to your own voice because, you know, we, we're learning, when we're investing in ourselves, we're, we're taking on uh, knowledge, new knowledge, and we're getting that from lots of different sources. Uh, which is great, which is what we want to do. And as you said, then we apply that. But how do people then move from that process of taking what they're bringing in from everywhere else and applying it, but having the confidence to hear, acknowledge and listen to their own voice? Because sometimes that, well, I always think that's right, but that sometimes goes against what you may have learnt from the experts or the gurus. So then how do you have the confidence to say, okay, but my inner voice is telling me this, so I think I'm going to go with this. But for me, I spend every morning meditating and that has really helped me develop awareness and know where my inner voice is talking, know what it looks, feel like and when to listen. What's your sort of advice for helping people do that? Because I think that's where the true source of power is really, isn't it? It's where a source of power is. Um, we were talking about this the other day, weren't we? Because you know we were talking. We were. Yeah, we were talking about meditation and um, and you know what is that 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 thing that you get in touch with when you hit that point in your meditation where it's like there's this awesome energy that's there, and um, and the reality for me is that what you're doing there is getting in touch with you, your 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 core essence, the source of you. So. Um, you know, the, the answer to your question from my viewpoint is the things that are, 
that we've talked about in the confidence igniter those are the fundamental things for a person to to implement and do and and action in their life in order to be able to number one here and number two tr listen to and trust their own inner you know sort of guidance systems um if you don't if you're not doing the things that are in the confidence igniter it becomes really really challenging to live life because you know you, you're in life you're either if, if we look at it as a pinball machine in life you're either the ball in the machine getting whacked by the fingers and someone else is pressing the button so so therefore life is something that happens to you and everything in life happens to you right so you're either in that position or you're in the position where you're the actual one pressing the buttons and hitting the ball with the fingers making the ball go where you want it to go everything that's included yeah. in the confidence igniter everything we're talking about right now is all there to support you to be in the position of the person playing the game rather than being the ball in the game. Yeah. And it just makes life so much easier and I guess more enjoyable. Um, things like making decisions. It's, and I was thinking about this, I think yesterday or the other day, the amount of time that is wasted when it comes to making a decision for people the anxiety that they go through and the worrying about if it's going to be the right decision and, and how that might affect other people. And I was thinking about that the other day, looking back on my life, how it, how it used to be before I, you know, was the pinball player. A decision could take me weeks or months and I would agonise over it, often end up making the wrong decision because I didn't know what voice I was listening to. But now a decision for me is a very easy process. It doesn't take me very long. I, I kind of do, if necessary, my data collection. I gather the, the data to, to help me make an informed decision. Mm -hmm. And then I tune straight into that voice, that feeling within me that I know if it's the right decision or not. And it's a very, very quick process for me now that it, does not involve much anxiety at all and that's a huge difference something that is quite it feels like it's small and not something you wouldn't pay much attention to but it actually is huge into how it makes you feel and move about your life yeah this, this is the um this is the oh that bloody phone's going again hold on there we go let's turn that off um, <laughs> <Busy man. laughs> it's so so what you're talking about there from my viewpoint is there are there are a lot of really subtle things that we did as we went through that program. Um, and, and something subtle is something that it's actually really difficult to see. Like it's, it's very, very small. It's not, not some big, huge, massive change, right? But the thing is, is that something that's really subtle, once you see it, it's not subtle at all. <laughs> in the impact no. that it has particularly over time and distance um you know every person out there is aiming a bow and arrow and they're aiming at a target that's 150 meters away so you know in your life we've, we've talked about this but for the benefit of everyone out there in, in your life when you aim your your arrow and you release your arrow flies through the air and it's hitting the target and for a lot of people, the arrow hits the target, but it hits eight inches to the lower right hand corner of the bullseye. It's not actually hitting the bullseye. Now, mm -hmm. if you're aiming from 150 meters away, how much adjustments necessary back from where you're aiming from in order to change the trajectory by eight inches at the, at the end? It's tiny. You wouldn't even really see it. You wouldn't. Yeah. You wouldn't see it at all. So... And it's, it's that subtle difference that makes such a big difference over there because, okay, it's eight inches. But in life, what's the difference between when your arrow hits the bullseye and when it hit, hits eight inches to the lower right? There's a really big difference in the outcome of that. There's a big difference like, you know, in the golf, if you finish number one on the PGA Tour, 
how much do you earn in comparison to the guy who finishes number two? Yeah, it's a huge, yeah, huge, huge difference. difference. So, and, and the difference in their games is very, very subtle. Mm. So, so for me, it's like you know, focus on the subtle things that do make a difference. And that's what we've stacked the Confidence Igniter through, you know, through and through. That program's got a lot of those little things that are really, really subtle. Yeah, absolutely. And I was you just speaking about the differences that makes then. I was just thinking about um, like Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> I've been thinking about him lately because I heard this recently. I now every morning I have the exact same smoothie for breakfast. And it used to be where every morning I would be, okay, what smoothie am I going to have now? And and thinking of different ways to create different smoothies each morning for breakfast, which was a process that was taking me at least 30 minutes to think of something new and then create it. But for the past uh, maybe month, two months, I've been having the exact same smoothie. And I've been thinking that Mark Zuckerberg and people like him have the exact same breakfast every morning because it reduces their decision making time. Well, that's what Darren. And because it reduces their decision making time, they've got more time to work on their business. Yes. Uh, Darren Rouse talked about that last year at ProBlogger. Now, Darren's like, I'm not to the same extreme as Darren, but he, he's bought what, like 10 of the exact same shirt and 10 of the exact same trousers and just different colors of them. And that's it. That, that's all he wears. He that's knows it. they're comfortable. He knows they fit. He knows they look the way he wants them to look. And that's it. That's all he wears. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, and I'm sure that if his wife is anything like mine, he probably gets a bit of flack for that. Because <laughs> I know I do. And <laughs> you wear something different. <laughs> and it's, it just keeps it simple. You know, it keeps it really simple. It means there's no decision point. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and then you can take that energy and put it towards things that that really matter. Like, which of course is another way of investing in yourself. Yeah. So the power of investing in yourself is is enormous. It's what makes the difference Huge. between hitting the bullseye and not. Yeah, and it, and you can do it in those small ways, and then of course progress into to bigger ways and larger investments. But all of it. Mm. All of it helps. Yeah. The, yeah. the other thing I thought I'd add in for right now, because people might not know this, when we did the Confidence Igniter program, um, Kaz actually had no idea what we were going to talk about. That's really scary. <laughs> <laughs> what we were, probably would have been, particularly considering that we were recording it uh, with an intention to share it with everybody. <laughs> um, so, so, you know, now she's, she's talking about all of this from her perspective of having actually gone through the program and done it and implemented it and, and been coached through it. Um, so, you know, that might seem a little bit weird, but that's what it is. And, um, and it works. Yeah. It's really valuable information and a way of learning and understanding something. So, um, yeah, it's very powerful. Mate, we've gone a little bit over time, so I think we're actually pretty much done for now. We have. Yeah. So we, we, yeah, were, we, have. we were obviously so, interested in that topic. So I hope everybody enjoyed it. Yeah, we can, you can tell that we both love it a lot. And, you know, I speak about it a lot through my newsletter and on my blog. And I know obviously you do with uh, on your side as well. Mm. And so for everyone watching, you can jump over to confidenceigniter.com. We've got some uh, a free email series with a few tasks on there about building your confidence. And then, of course, I'm on my travel blog and, and my advanced business abilities if you want to connect further on there. So awesome. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Kaz. Been great. Thank and we're blabbing again. We're blabbing every week, everyone. So I think next week will be, I think. Did we set it up? No, we haven't week? set it up. We're both away. Because we're away on the weekend, but um, pretty sure it'll end up yeah. being either Wednesday or Thursday. And we'll make sure that everybody knows about it. Yeah, sure. So it would be through our channels wherever you connect with us we'll we'll set it out there and what we're talking about and when so we're doing this every week we're talking about different topics that relate to confidence yeah. and control yep awesome great thanks guys thanks mike thanks, Kaz. been great chatting once again i always learn new things awesome chat soon <laughs> all right okay. thanks everyone yeah, bye, bye.